What's up guys? Hey, Jared Beckstrand here, doctor of physical therapy, toneandtitan.com, and this is a post-pregnancy total body workout, perfect for beginners. Let's get into it right now. All right, ladies, hey, thank you so much for joining me today. Can't wait to jump into this workout with you guys. So as a doctor of physical therapy, as a postpartum rehab specialist, I see a lot of post-pregnancy women. Those who come in to see me with low back pain, uh, diastasis recti, SI joint pain, there's quite a few things that can happen. And so inevitably, as we're working together, these women ask me the question, well, when can I start working out again? And what does that look like? What exercises are safe for me to jump back into after having this baby. So that is what I wanted to shoot today, you guys. I wanted to shoot just this simple total body workout, um, exercises that are safe for you to start doing after having your baby. We're going to talk about diastasis recti, make sure that all the exercises are safe for your abs, and uh, that's the goal with the video today. And so if you do like this video, I'd love for you to hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, I'd love for you to subscribe to Tone and Titan, hit that little red subscribe button down there, and let's get into this workout. But before we jump right into it, you guys, I'm a dude, obviously you don't want to watch me run through these. So what I did is I went and got a postnatal specialist myself. I'm actually gonna go get my wife. She's had four kids and these are the questions that she's asked me every time after having a kid. So these are the same workouts that I like to run her through, uh, postpartum, post-pregnancy, as soon as she's been cleared by her doctor. Uh, one quick mention along those lines, um, it's been a normal, uncomplicated vaginal delivery Wait until you're about six weeks out or until you have your doctor's permission to start these. If it was a C-section or if there's complications, it's safer to wait till eight weeks. Um, again, those are kind of general kind of ballpark um, recommendations. Make sure you have the go ahead from your doctor, from your midwife, whoever it is, to go ahead and start exercising. Okay, that's it for me, you guys. Let's jump into it. I'll go get my wife and let's, let's run through it. All right, so this workout's going to take us about 18 minutes to complete. We're going to be doing three sets of each of six exercises. We'll perform them in 40-20 intervals, meaning you'll do 40 seconds of work followed by 20 seconds of rest. Let's get into it first with some air squats. Okay, so an air squat, feet are about shoulder width apart. Your weight stays back on your heels. Hinge at your hips. Try to keep your chest back, your shoulders back, and your head up nice and high. Now, for this one, if you're just getting started, you might not be going down very very low um, if it does feel okay and if you do feel like you can go lower down to parallel is about what we shoot for but again go at your own pace the idea is to just get into as low a squat as you can comfortably uh, feel the squeeze in your butt as you come back to that upright position we're gonna feel this one in the hips we're gonna feel this one in the quads again emphasis is trying to keep your back straight Okay, so there's our 40 seconds. For the 20 second low intervals, I want you guys to just do something active. We're gonna do either some side steps or some marches, some arm swings. Um, the goal here is to just kind of keep your heart rate up during the low rest period. So during that 20 second low period. Okay, exercise number two is gonna be some deadlifts. Again, feet are about hip width apart. What I want you to do now is just a slight bend in your knees, hinge at your hips, and lower your shoulders down towards the ground. Camille's gonna turn sideways here in a second, and you'll be able to see, I want you to keep your back nice and neutral. I want you to keep your back nice and flat. There should be at least a straight back, if not even a little bit of a curve in your back while you're performing this deadlift exercise. The goal here is I want you to fill this in your glutes. You're also going to fill it a little bit in your hamstrings and a little bit in your lower back. Those are three crucial areas as your entire world just dropped below your knees. Um, a, lot of, a lot of your time is going to be spent um, you know, lifting and picking things up off the floor. It's good, it's important that you learn to do that with the right mechanics. All right, so there's the 40 seconds. Now we're gonna hit the 20 seconds of the low interval. Um, Camille's just doing some marching in place here. Again, the goal is to just keep your heart rate up. Now let's turn around, find a wall close by. We're gonna be doing some wall push-ups. Um, feet are, or excuse me, uh, hands are about one and a half times shoulder width apart. Um, feet are away from the wall, and what you're going to do is just perform a push-up on the wall. Now, the thing with this exercise, you might feel like you can jump into a push-up down on the ground, be it modified on your knees or full push-up on your toes. 
However, what we want to do is try to actually avoid that position. We don't want to get into that plank position. If there is an active diastasis recti that you may have incurred, that's another word for abdominal separation. If that did happen during your pregnancy, we don't want to do anything where the stomach is in a dependent or hanging position. And that's why we hit the wall push-ups. There's your 40 seconds. Great exercise for the chest, works the shoulders. We're gonna hit a little bit of some triceps with that one also. This next one, we're gonna jump into some scap pinches. So you're just going to stand upright, um, arms come up in front of you, uh, elbows bent at a 90 degree, and then you're gonna pull your arms apart and back behind you. Head is in a good position. I don't want you looking down at the ground while you're doing this. The emphasis here is I want you to try to really squeeze your shoulder blades together. So you're gonna feel this in the back of your shoulders. You're also going to feel this between your shoulder blades. Now, this one is crucial, especially you breastfeeding moms out there. Um, we just want to train those muscles. Um, you know, again, so much of your world is going to be gazing down and, and kind of, you know, dropping your head in a forward direction. It can really cause a lot of neck pain, uh, muscle knots in the shoulders. This is a great way to eliminate those, is those scap pinches. And so there we go, 40 seconds there. Here's your 20 second rest or your 20 second low interval. And then we're gonna get into another one of my favorite exercises for you know, kind of the upper back and neck is going to be a wall slide. So to do that, what you're going to do is back up against a wall. I want your butt, uh, your, your butt, your shoulder blades in the back of your head are basically the three points of contact with the wall. Your feet can come out from the wall about eight inches. Get your knuckles onto the wall and then what you're going to do is slide your arms up and down just like you're seeing Camille do here in the video. So again the three points of contact. I want your butt, your shoulder blades, and the back of your head in contact with the wall. Knuckles are in contact with the wall if you can get there and then you're just sliding up and down. Looks incredibly simple, but really you guys, this one's a roaster. This one, you're gonna feel a lot of muscles in your back and in your neck and in your shoulders working with this one. The goal being to kind of correct the posture, to get up into a normal posture and eliminate some of the tension that you might be feeling in your neck. Okay, so there's your 40 seconds. Here's the 20 second low interval. And then we're actually going to get down on the floor for this last one. So go ahead and start to get down onto the floor. You're gonna lay on your back with your knees bent and we're gonna perform some vacuums. And so to do a vacuum, what I want you to do first is perform what we call a posterior pelvic tilt, meaning I want you to flatten your back down into the floor. And then the vacuum you perform by sucking your belly button into your spine. Now, I don't want you to inhale. I don't want you to just simply take a deep breath in and use that to draw your belly button into the spine or into, into the floor uh, to, or to suck your stomach in. What you should do is you should be able to actually breathe your breath out and then pull your belly button in. This is one of the most crucial exercises that you have to be doing after having a child. This is really gonna work that transverse abdominus muscle. Oh, hey, pay attention to how she gets up, you guys. I want you to log roll out of that, meaning roll onto your side and then use your arms to push up out of it. That's how you're gonna get up out of it. I'll mention, I'll mention more about that on the second set, but that transverse abdominus, muscle is just gonna be crucial in um, even healing your postpartum abs. Okay, ladies, here we go, round two. We're gonna jump back into our second set of air squats. Again, feet are shoulder width apart, uh, weight is back on the heels. Drop down just as low as you can into a squat. The emphasis here is I really want you to focus on uh, just you know keeping your back straight and getting your hips low. Um, once again, so much of your world has, has just become below your knees. You know, you're always going to be, you know, picking up your child, picking up toys, picking up whatever off of the floor. One of the worst things that I see moms do all the time is bend at their lower back. And those are the moms that usually come in to see me for help with lower back pain. If we can train this squat, if we can train the quads and the glutes to fire, if we can train the knees to bend and the hips to bend, you're going to feel a lot better because of it. So, okay, there's your 40 seconds. Here's the 20 second low interval. You guys just keep it active. Just keep moving. Um, you know, some side steps, some marching in place, whatever you want to do. We're just trying to keep the heart rate up during the low intervals. Now let's get into some deadlifts. So I mentioned, you know, picking things up off the floor, picking your baby up off of the floor. Um, the squat is going to be the best way to do that, but I realize that all of you aren't going to squat every time. If I can train you to do a proper deadlift, meaning, you know, knees straight and especially keeping that back straight, 
hinging at your hips, using your glutes and your hamstrings to pull yourself back upright, that's what I'm all about. That's really going to save you a world of low back pain later on. And it's just a great muscle. It's, it's a great way to get, again, the hips used to bending, the glutes used to firing, and the back maintaining a nice neutral position. Nice job, ladies. You guys are looking great. Here we go. We're just about halfway through our second set. Uh, the next exercise that we have on the agenda, we're going to jump back into the wall push-ups here in about seven seconds. So go ahead and find your wall. Hands are about one and a half, uh, one and a half percent shoulder width apart. Feet are away from the wall. The, the further your feet are away from the wall, the more pressure there will be on your hands. Therefore, the more difficult the exercise becomes. But I don't want you to be doing this one down on the floor for the purposes or for the reasons that I mentioned earlier. I just don't want any weight on those postpartum abs. Um, you guys shouldn't be doing anything that really aggressively activates your rectus abdominis muscle. That's the six-pack muscle that goes down the front. That's the one that gets split in the instance of diastasis recti. And so for those reasons, we're going to be doing the wall push-ups. If you can, while you're doing the wall push-up, try to keep your belly button sucked in. I want that transverse abdominis muscle active while you're doing that. Nice job, you guys. Looking so good. So proud of you right now. We are halfway done with our second set. We've got three more exercises. Looking strong. Heart rate should be up. Should be filling this one a little bit by now. We're going to be doing even one more set after this. It's going to be a great workout for you ladies. Okay, scap, pinch, scap pinches. Here we go. Standing upright with the elbows bent to 90. Shoulders are up bent to 90 as well. Then what we're going to do is just pull our elbows and pull our wrists apart. Really the focus here is, is uh, squeezing those shoulder blades together back behind you. That's where your emphasis is. I really want you to try to press and even hold that for like a two or three second count when you get back there. Squeeze and hold. Um, don't look down with this one. Everybody tends to look down at the floor with this. I want you to keep your head up, your neck in a neutral position. The goal here is that we're working on those muscles that are between our shoulder blades that are going to hold our neck and our back in a better posture. Those, those babies, man, they get heavy. Um, don't get me wrong. You know, you're always carrying them around. Um, you know, you're carrying them in your arms. You're carrying their carrier. Um, again, breastfeeding is a big thing. Your head is always forward when you're breastfeeding. And so these are just some great exercises is they're going to help to alleviate some of the tension there and to minimize some of the pain that you might feel with with uh, those activities wall slides so feet are away from the wall but the butt shoulder blades in the back of the head are against the wall knuckles slide up and down the wall this one you should feel again between your shoulder blades um, this is a funny one. I do this one in, the, in my clinic quite a bit. I use this for headache pain and neck pain and upper back pain. It seems like the first couple of reps, people will say, oh, this doesn't feel too bad. But then by the end of, say, for example, this 40 second interval, it's it's a whole new ball game. It's it's a roaster back there. You know, no weight, no resistance with this at all. But to just maintain that posture and then to run through those motions at your shoulders becomes actually a very effective exercise, you guys. So that's our second set of wall sides. Uh, let's go ahead and start to get down on the floor for our second set of vacuums. I've got a couple more important points that I want to touch on here. So that transverse abdominus muscle. So that one, it originates on your lower back. It wraps around your sides and connects in the front. I call it the corset muscle because really when you contract that muscle, that's the motion that it does. It sucks everything in and it keeps everything in tight. Okay, now what, part, what postpartum mom out there doesn't want things sucked in nice and tight? Everybody out there, I can feel all your digital hands raised. That's the muscle that we're trying to work with this exercise. You're laying on your back, flatten your back into the ground, and then try to bring your belly button into your spine. You should feel your muscles actively contract to pull that in towards your spine. Hold that for a three to five second count, and then relax. Log roll out of it, meaning you're gonna roll onto one side, and then use your arms to kind of push yourself up onto your side to get your feet underneath you. The goal there is that I just don't want you to activate that that uh, rectus abdominis muscle. That's the one that's typically injured with, uh, with pregnancy and childbirth. Here we go, ladies, coming at you hard and fast with set three. Let's get into our last, uh, our third and final set of squats. Um, uh, weight is back on the heels. One of the biggest problems that I see is people will kind of lean forward too much, get their weight out on their toes, bend at your knees, bend at your hips, but your lower back should be straight. 
that means your chest is still raised up towards the ceiling. Your head should maintain a neutral position. Again, with this one, I don't want you to look down at the floor. Should be able to keep that neck neutral and the gaze directed straight forward. You guys only have three more seconds of these squats. Just like that, ladies, going as low as you can each time. Nice job. We'll do a 20 second low interval. Here we go, some side steps. Just something to keep the heart rate up, keep things moving, keep that blood flowing during the low 20 second rest. Before we jump into our deadlifts, deadlifts is gonna be the next one. Feet are about shoulder width apart, knees with a slight bend in them. We're going to hinge at the hips. The focus is on using the glutes and the hamstrings to pull yourself back upright. That lower back should be uh, maintained in a relatively neutral position. All right, hey you guys, I've also got some other cool uh, workouts on here. I've got some other cool postpartum stuff. I've got a whole playlist dedicated to postpartum fitness. I've even got another whole playlist dedicated to diastasis, recti, healing, and repair. So what I want you to do as soon as you finish this workout, go ahead and check those out. Check the description down below in this video, and that well, I'll uh, drop some links in there to both of those playlists. Those are definitely valuable resources. I think you guys will like those. Nice job, you guys. Here we go. Here's our 20 second low interval, marching in place, getting the arms swinging, anything we can do to just stay active for 10 more seconds before we're gonna jump into those wall push-ups. The further away your feet are on the wall push-ups, the more difficult it becomes, but I definitely don't want your torso to get down to even like 45 degrees. If your torso is forming like a 45 degree with the floor, you're probably being a little bit too aggressive with it. The purpose of this workout is to provide you with a beginner total body workout after pregnancy. And so, uh, you know, just be, just be patient with it. Um, you know, it took nine months for your body to get into this condition. It's going to take some time and some effort and definitely a whole lot of consistency to get it back to where you want it to be. So keep that in mind as you're doing these exercises and especially these wall push-ups. Try to keep your core nice and tight. Try to keep your stomach nice and sucked in while we do that 40-second wall push-up. Nice job, ladies. We are halfway done. We're three exercises in on our third set. We've only got three exercises left keeping the heart rate high during the low interval here with some side steps back and forth for five more seconds. And then we'll get into some of those scap pinches. So the elbows come up, the shoulders are bent to 90, the elbows are bent to 90, and then we're going to squeeze back in the back. Looks just like that. Um, so you guys, as a doctor of physical therapy, postpartum fitness is definitely one of my specialties, definitely one of my passions. I actually wrote an entire program all about how to heal your diastasis recti, how to uh, put your abs back together after pregnancy, um, how to eliminate your quote unquote mommy tummy. It's actually called the Mommy Tummy Fix program. Um, it's, it's really incredible. It includes all the core workouts that you need to rehab your abs. It's got some other uh, you know, cardio workouts and some eating tips and some, some menu plans. Um, everything that you need to tone and tighten your postpartum abs. I hope you guys are interested in that. I, I hope you guys check that out. Check the link down below or just head over to mommytummyfix.com and you can see Camille's transformation. Camille didn't always look like this, guys, but like this, you guys. Um, she has worked hard and she has made some great progress. Um, and and uh, and her story is pretty incredible. Head over to the head over to mommytummyfix.com to check that out. Okay, ladies, here we go. Wall slides. Feet are. It's hard to see in the video, but her feet are actually about six to eight inches away from the wall. But I do want your backside, your shoulder blades, and the back of your head to be in contact with the wall during these wall slides. Knuckles are in contact with the wall as well as we slide up and down for only 10 more seconds. Looking good, looking strong. Filling this one between your shoulder blades, filling this one in the shoulders themselves. If you can't get your knuckles quite all the way back to the wall, no worries there. Just try to make an effort to pull your shoulder blades together while moving your arms up and down as Camille just demonstrated. Nice job, ladies. Hey, we've only got 10 more seconds left. Go ahead and start to get down onto the floor now, and we'll do, uh, let's see, uh, 40 seconds of our stomach vacuums or of our uh, posterior pelvic tilt with the transverse abdominus activation. So again, the transverse abdominus or the TA, that's the muscle that originates on your lower back, wraps around to your belly button, sucks everything in nice and tight, key muscle in rehabbing postpartum abs, 
if you do nothing else from this video, you have to ma you have to master uh, this contraction, being able to suck your belly button into your back, being able to draw that stomach in nice and tight, and maintain that for an amount of time. So Camille's holding these for about three seconds. If you feel like you can go five, that's great. If you can, if you feel like you can go even more than that, up to about ten seconds, that's wonderful too. Three, two, one, and then log roll out of it. So Camille's going to roll to her left, use her right hand to push herself up, and then to come back up to that standing position. Ladies, you roasted it. Nice job. There is your 18-minute workout. We hit every major muscle group in the body. Should be filling this one. Heart rate's high. You guys did a fantastic job, and I am proud of you. Nice job, ladies. All right, ladies, hey, there it was. Six of my favorite exercises for just a great total body workout. Again, with some of those mom areas in mind, we wanna protect our lower back, we wanna lift with our legs, and we want to protect our upper back and, and neck that way also. So thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for joining my wife with this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did like this, I'd love for you to hit that thumbs up button down below. Thank you so much for that in advance. If you have any questions, comments, or even suggestions for future videos from Tone and Titan, I would love to hear from you, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Now's also a great chance to subscribe to Tone and Titan here on YouTube. Hit that button right there. If you want more postpartum fitness tips and advice, that's a great playlist for you right there. If you're interested in more diastasis recti specific things, that's the link that you want to go to right down there. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.